Hey, I'm back. Looking deeper, uh, I had to take off the top like I had shown in the previous video. After I took off the top, there's these two very large screws. Actually, after I took off the top right here, there's these guides, these keepers. You have to remove the keepers. Then you could remove these very large screws and gently move. This one just comes up. This one had to move down to clear the lens and up. So now that I have removed these, I am into. The, oh, and there's three screws one, two, three. I am down into the meat. And look what I have here. I have one of these. This is the one that's completely broke. Uh, the carrier is broke. So I'm going to have to remove these focus lenses, or whatever they end up being called, if they're not broke. They might be broken. This might just be... Uh, a very boring video. So... In order to get these out, I am going to. <coughs> oh, pardon me. <coughs> pardon me again. Let's see. Yeah. I think. I'm going to undo some springs. So to do that, I actually need to go get a... Well, maybe I do ha already have a hook. I do not have a hook. So I'm going to no need to go get a hook. I'll be right back. I'm back. I have a dental hook. You could probably use an auto automotive hook if you want to. So right now what I'm doing is I am removing... The springs from both of these sides of the carrier. The one I hope to rehab. Hoping that that's primarily what's holding them in place. There is a lot of tension on them. I think that is actually what holds them in place. So now. I need to figure out how to move this carrier because it is in the way. There we are. Alright, so the bottoms are still part of the bottom. Both have perfectly fine bottoms, so I did not need to do undo the hook for the bottom. But I didn't need to undo the hook for the top one right here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out a way of carefully I'm doing this. Oh, it just comes out. <laughs> it just comes out. So that comes out. I take the spring out. And the spring, it looks like, goes right into this, which is broke. So I am going to have to take apart the other one, and since I have not taken it apart yet, you'll get to see all the steps now, instead of just me appearing in the middle of nowhere with an idea. So now, yeah, that goes right there. This one I might be able to rehab. Um, actually, I'll probably just part it out parting out seems like the most honest thing I can do because um, if I do anything else it's I'm going to stick somebody with this I don't want to do that that's rude I already got stuck with it and it sucked for me alright so yeah I'm going to part it out so this no I'm going to keep I'm going to keep it apart this part I need and these two parts I need. 
because these two part these lenses I'm gonna put in the other one. So similar steps. Take off the T5 set screw right here. It might be a two millimeter or one and a half millimeter. Um, so that's off. Took off these I uh, what are these rubber grommets. If I was smart, I'd be wearing gloves because I don't know what these have been used for. Let's hope it wasn't anything serological. I'm going to set this in my lap. Looks like these were built with lots of different ways of putting them together. Because these are Phillips screws and the other one had flat screws. I'm not sure why. But they look to be 15 millimeters long and they're probably 1.5 pitch. Um, I'm guessing. They could also be standard. I don't have my pitch gauge on me, so these are just guesses. So, just gonna angle and wiggle. Clear the top, clear the eyepieces. So, you see right here these two things I'm going to remove. Things being flat screws. Actually, no, I have to remove these keepers first. Obviously, one of those keepers isn't going to be doing much, but the other one... So, lift that one up. Because if I don't take those keepers out, when I try... Yeah, I'm still going to have to take it all apart. I was going to say, if you don't have to uh, change your eyepieces, uh, then you wouldn't have to take off these keepers, because uh, you could just undo the three screws holding the top of the cage. But since I am replacing these top eyepieces with eyepieces that aren't broke, or one eyepiece that isn't broke, that, nope, two eyepieces that aren't broke, because one's broke by the holder, One's broke by the where the eyepieces wiggle back and forth. So, see, this one's broke and then it's broke right here. It's not a major break, but I likely will not be able to part those two things out to somebody else unless they need a lens or prisms. Right. So, this is the flat screw so take that out and then swing this close in out and I am putting it face down so that any grease doesn't get all over the prism because uh, I imagine cleaning the prism is going to be a big pain in the butt because that's always been a pain in the butt for whenever I have to clean cameras I gotta come up with a better camera angle for this stuff because this can't be that exciting. Nope. Right, so 
so now we have these three screws that are holding the meat of the microscope into the housing which I'm going to undo and they're just flat um, only to bet that they're probably torqued down to oh I don't know I get the feeling of 30 inch pounds 40 inch pounds not even just to seat the screws and not have a rattle because as long as you're not swinging these microscopes by the base they shouldn't the screws should it back out Now time to shuck this. <laughs> Alright. So I see a... Yep. I know exactly how that happened. Alright. So I'm going to do this on the side so you hopefully have a better view of what I'm about to do. So, this right here is where I need to put this. So, match it up. Because the lens right here goes facing up. Now I need to get the spring from back there to right here, which is how it's like over there. That's all that moves it. Huh. If I really want to go whole hog. I should probably clean these lenses because I have some juice on them. I'll do that after I get a fix going. So slide it in, slide it up, put it down like that. That way this is around the rod right over here and this is settles in that rod line up the areas that you need to put the spring in this spring broke right there you can see it right there that probably is why this one broke and they probably removed this carrier when the spring broke instead of going and getting a new spring and fixing it right. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Alright, so I have a pair of tweezers. I am going to move this out of the way. Tweeze. Yep, long side goes in, down, so this right here, this long piece, this big bigger side, the smaller size actually goes on the top of the carrier, the gray carrier, uh, so this longer piece goes into the circular metal round part with a uh, peg that sticks out, so to make it work, yeah. I'm 
wonder how actually I'm gonna take a look at the other one. take a look at this one so look at it from galore this so I have it in area I could view okay yeah it doesn't go in the hole it actually goes in to side right here so that makes it easier just goes it hooks right around a bigger side of the black piece. So this gets. I'm gonna move that. Yeah. Okay. So the string goes down. black side yeah okay I think I got it So, spring has to be almost at the very end of my tweezers. Go down, come up. I have it hooked to the. I hope I have it hooked. Yep, it's hooked. Ah! Now it's unhooked. <laughs> spring is looped the other end is in yeah okay so I'm gonna get another pair of tweezers These would probably be better. These are spring loaded tweezers in the opposite way. So I'll go down, grab my spring.
Well, you know, I think I'm going to use my hook. Get the spring started. Yeah, it's going to work better. I should have done this to start with. Because what's happening is this is pulling the whole assembly forward like it should. So, hook, pull to the side, put in the carrier. Bring the spring up. Rest, move, voila. So just to show you what I did, there's this spring right here. I'm going to get a light, that way you can see what I'm doing. That spring right there hooks right back there. Does that black arm the hooks and I'll actually pull this whole assembly right back here forward and now I'm sure that if I were to turn this after putting one of these on and tightening a set screw actually I'm just going to turn it with my fingers oh look at that moves up and down like it should so now I have one working machine so what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm actually gonna clean up all this grease I'm gonna put new grease on because this grease um, is 30 years old so new grease is gonna cause this to move a lot smoother uh, be a lot better I'm less likely to break this uh, probably nylon gear which would be a good thing because I could see the nylon gear is actually starting to crack so if that nylon gear cracks I am gonna have to get a new one mm. 
Um, so I might need to change over. Actually, no, I can't change it over. I just pull off that gear and put push on a new one. Yep, that's exactly what I have to do. Um, actually, I'd probably have to take off this E clip and then take off this pressure washer, then push the rod out, and then push a new rod on with the. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna check and make certain the other doesn't have a cracked gear. It does too. So I'll probably have to order new gear, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. But I need to I need to move this up. So. Actually, no, they're at the same level. Give or take. I'm going to put this on, tighten up the set screw, which is not in there. Just to experiment with it going up and down. Oh, that looks so, so butter. Just like it came out of the factory after 30 years. <laughs> Alright. So, now that that's fixed, I will probably toss this. I'm going to have to take off all the lenses, which means I'm going to have to undo all the work I just did. Yep, I'm going to have to take off all these set screws for all the lenses. And then toss the whole assembly in my ultrasonic cleaner. And then the lenses. Lenses I'm going to have to carefully clean with some microfiber cloths. I'm not so certain how I'm going to do that. But that's what I'm going to have to do. Um, right here this bottom assembly comes out. There's a bunch of probably 4 or 5 millimeter hex nuts. And then there's some... The springs for these lens assemblies on the middle and top, and then right here is another set of three set screws to pop these lenses off. And once I do that, I'll be able to actually toss this whole thing into a ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, once I do that, I'll just grease everything up with uh, whatever type of clear grease they have. Um, and then uh, should be good to go as new so that's that's the goal anyways so I'm going to put it back together for right now though to show you how it goes together undo the set screw that comes out Yep. Then carefully put it back into a housing. More carefully than me. Line up the screw holes. 
put the flat screws back in. Next step is after all this is clean and put together is make a new stand for it. Which shouldn't be too hard seeing as I'll have an extra piece or two to use as a template. So then this goes in on the rod and down carefully around set it on the there is a little post that sits on and then screw in the flat screwdriver hole this gets driven down a little bit you just want to flatten out the pressure washer you do not want it to you don't need to go super tight on it just literally not even finger tight so then this just pops in from the side make certain You get the line, hole lined up for the other screw. There we go. Alright, so line it up. Now it should just be able to adjust both. I need to get that screw back in a little bit better. There we go. That crap, I touched the prism. I'm trying my best not to. So, I got to clean that off. So, to clean off these prisms, I'm just using some rubbing alcohol and some q tips. I'm sure there's a better way of doing it. I just want to clean off the thumbprint I was going to leave on it. And I'm cleaning it in a downward stroke so if it has any residue it'll be on the very very edge which shouldn't cause too much distortion. There's that. So I need to tighten that 
tighten this screw down. It doesn't tighten down too much, so I guess that's just how it is. Mm. I'm gonna check. Yeah, it's just an open hole, so I should be able to look from right here and see what's going on. I think it might just be catching on the edge. So I'm just going to tighten her up a little bit more. Yep. I was just being too timid with it. So tighten down just enough so that it still moves. You still get good movement. <laughs> Alrighty. Prisms look good. Got my fingerprint off that so I don't look all muddy. Alright. So, tighten down the three screws on the outside. Just to screwdriver tight. screws inside so just so the screwdriver doesn't move them anymore put the bumper holders back on there these are newer I bet these have been replaced so there's that right there Yep, that keeps that moving. Oh, I can see so much better. That's a lie, but I need to take this apart and get back down to those lenses because there was butter on one of the lenses. So I'm going to do that real fast went through and tried to clean up any of the other lenses gently don't go too crazy on it because honestly it's more likely you're going to cause more problems than you're going to solve Everything's nice and clean, except for one lens. I think it's one near the bottom. Yeah. To find out which lens is giving you the problems. You pretty much have to go through and, yep, it's that one. Go through and 
clean each and every one slowly and carefully. Um, trying to get dust on the edge of the lenses either because it'll it'll drive you crazy. So this is back. Just need to set it back down in my. Mount. Yep. That goes there. That goes there. Get my screws back in place. Index and rubbing alcohol again until all the streaks are gone. At least I knew what the problem was. There we go. Got that on. No, a little bit longer. Nope. These have some pretty long screws. The bottoms are your kind of short Phillips screws or actually kind of short um, flat screws too. Just depends on how old the system is I guess or what screws they wanted to use at the time.
pop the little eye cover protectors back on. Yeah, these are greasy, so I'm gonna have to clean that lens. But these are easy lenses to clean, thankfully. There we go. Those are on. Yep. Just around the left. Not so just around the right. Loosen them because otherwise they'll be airtight. Yeah, these could use clean. But okay. So now to come all the way up. Tighten my set screw. Alright. That is all the way up. There should be one X right in the middle. Now I go down. I should hit the stop before I hit the other pieces. I do. Now I need some light. So I'm going to come up to 1x so I get plenty of... There we go. So good. Until I get my camera working, you're just going to have to take my word for this. So, lens is in. Bases in, little protectors in, the zoom is in. So now all I have to do is put on my 
handy dandy camera insert Neat. So there's probably one more thing I need to get. It looks like this insert needs to have some type of uh, tube that does periscope right there, and then the camera mounts right here. But that's something to take care of another day. One working microscope out tube. Not too bad. And now I have some parts. Wouldn't be better to have two working microscopes, but yeah. That doesn't always happen. Thanks for spending some time with me today going over all this, and hopefully it helps somebody out. Good luck. Go out there and get some.